Hey guys, what's up? Uh, welcome on Top Fishing Videos. I'm David. So, you're in the right place if you like fishing and fishing videos. So, before watching this one, don't forget to subscribe and tick the bell. So, see you after this video. Now, let's watch. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Connor from Out of Work Outdoors. Today, we're going to be covering striper fishing in February of 2021. We'll give you three baits, where to find them, and best time of day to catch them. So welcome back today, uh, due to popular demand, we're gonna be covering striper fishing. So right behind me, I kind of wrote down a little, a little agenda of what we're going to be covering today uh stripers february winter time that's right now uh it's part of our fishy explain 2021 uh kind of series of videos that's going to be coming out and today we're keeping it simple you know in the winter time the more simple the, the the more simple you make it the better you off you are you're not gonna have a lot of bites on switching back and forth between a lot of rods not in the cards uh, we're going to go with three baits, okay? And this is going to cover pretty much everybody, okay? And for the guys that are saltwater guys, your seasons are so weird because the, the striper migrations, they go so far up and down the coast on the east coast. And on the west coast, it's kind of really centralized. So basically in February, you guys are either on a boat in the ocean or you're pretty much not going to catch much, much of fish of that way. Uh, if you do, let me know because uh, I am going to focus this mainly on freshwater. That's most of my experiences. And we're going to start off with the baits, right? So the baits, you got umbrella rigs and you got any rigs. So this is an umbrella rig topped with uh, nothing but bucktails and a little fluke on the back. And this is a castable umbrella rig. It's also dubbed an Alabama rig. But this one's special because it uses fluorocarbon line. So you see how this one's all metal? This one's all fluorocarbon line. So if your fish is pressured, throw this. And uh, it'll be very successful at it. But how do you how you decorate this is up to you. I mean, you get the spreader bar system. You put bucktails on it. You can put flukes on it. Take your pick. And what you want, there's no right or wrong answer. That's an umbrella rig. Okay? Suspending jerk baits. Suspending jerk baits. Popular ones right here. We got the... Uh, Dual Realist 120 size, 127 I think, and then you got the Spro McStick 110. There's also the Mega Bass, and, and there's also the other ones from Dawa that we'll put in the description. Those are the single non-jointed, and don't forget about my jointed buddies, my little Bomber 15As, or 16As if you're going to try to chase bigger stripers, it's up to you. But that's the suspending jerkbait class. That's for the boats and for the land base guys. Or the umbrella rigs and a rigs, primarily that's going to be for the boat guys. You can throw an a rig, but it's going to cost you quite a bit if you lose one. And on top of that, I just ran through this, but the jigs, the jig, a jig head with a fluke on the back, well, if, like that, right? That's probably going to be the cheapest run out. I mean, you're talking a dollar a piece, right? And I mean, all I'm playing with is the the Z-Man uh, flukes, they look just basically exactly like the fluke, but they are stretchy. So that's pretty cool. So if you're very budget conscious, pick up some of these. One of these will last an entire trip, okay, or multiple trips for that, for that one. So that's what I'm going to say are my best three for uh, rigs. Um, and you have to kind of figure out what kind of rods and reels, but for the most part, the bottom two, seven foot uh, spin rods this is gonna be fine. 15 pound line, more than enough. Uh, the top one, you're trolling, so you're gonna need a dedicated trolling set trolling setup. The A rigs is fairly specialized, also seven, eight foot rods throwing 20, 25 pound line or 80 pound braid on that one right there. But but that's that's what I want to do. The idea of this is not to have baits that are gonna be moving real fast. You want baits that are kind of suspend, stay in the general area of the fish. Because the fish, they're not really active. They don't want to move very far to grab your bait. So you got to keep the baits 
in the fishes kind of area. That's why live bait works really, really good this time of year. Okay, so live bait's also another thing too. As for locations, uh, if you had a lake with a bunch of little arms, or little feeder creeks, things like that, don't even check the feeder creeks. They're not in there. They're going to be main lake. So you focus your attention on main lake points, main lake creek channels. Okay. And that's basically what they're going to be. They're going to be suspended. So you're going to probably want some type of electronics. Uh, this is the time of year where cheap electronics will be just fine. Okay. Down imaging, you probably don't even need. Standard 2D with graphs, probably as much as you want. That's about a $300 unit. You could probably do this very well, very well with. Okay. So that's your open water. So they're suspended over long points and main channel. Start there. Start there, and if they're not there, you can move around a little bit. But usually they're there. Usually they're suspended. Sometimes they're on the bottom if the sun's out. But if it's cloudy, they're suspended. As for rivers, look for the different holes and fish the damn tail waters, okay? That's where we do most of our striper fishing, regardless of time of year. Damn tail waters, if they're releasing, if they're not releasing, it doesn't matter. If they're not releasing, go find deeper holes. If they are, find eddies, find something in the river that will block the flow of water that the fish can get behind and they can ambush, stuff like that. So that's that's location, okay? And by the way, I did not mention like timber, grass lines, anything like that. They don't live there. Not this time of year. Active feeding times, from my experience, active feeding times always going to be 2 p.m. 6 p.m. That's when the sun has already gone up. The water has warmed up a little bit. All the life kind of comes up to life. And most of your action is going to be happening right around 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, uh, basically the bait, will, the, the hybrid stripers and white bass, they'll gang up on the shad. They'll kind of try to push them shallow, push them to some type of a wall. Uh, and they'll try to pretty much ambush them. That's what they do all summer long anyways. But it's a very slow system now. So it takes a long time for it to happen. There is no top water action. It's not like that. But if, you're, but if you're from the bank, this is where these two will come in. You know, your jerk bait, your suspending uh, jerk bait, and your uh, flukes, that's that's good times. Now, if you're going to fish outside this, you're going to have to dead stick. The dead stick works really good in the AM, in the AM hours, okay, if you're on a boat. Uh, a dead stick, what that is, is basically is a jig head that is designed to stay horizontal when you're lying straight or vertical above it, and you put a fluke body on it, and it just stays, like, horizontal the whole time. Without you moving it, you just put it in your rod holder on your boat, and it just sits there. You don't move it, nothing. Okay, so that's death technique. That's a deadly technique for strappers in the time. But it can be very boring, because you're not doing anything while you're freezing your ass off, you know? So that's good. The, um, the umbrella rig, that should work all day. If you've mapped out of school, just troll through them, play with speeds. You should be able to catch them. Uh, suspending jerk baits and the jig head, like I said, you kind of fall back over here. This is kind of in the... Uh, a land base for the land base guys so that's what I've seen and this is like I said there's this is 80% of my knowledge it doesn't mean it's always gonna happen but most of the times it will happen something like this okay all right let's talk about the feeding times I have written here two to six right so my, my reason for two to six is because the sun rises it warms things up fish finally got enough metabolism going to the point where they want to chase bait. So in the in the winter time, a lot of the bait is offshore, all the fish is offshore. But the fish have to corner the bait somehow. So they will push the bait shallow. And that's your moment of opportunity for the for the land based guys. For the boat guys, same thing. You know, uh, you want to push a little bit closer to the bank at that point and you want to troll or cast to them. You're gonna be a lot more successful also. But the reason for that is uh, you know, regardless of where the moon phases are at, you know, that whole thing, fish have to eat every day. Or well, at least they're going to try to feed every day. Okay, so they have to corner this bait fish somehow. And they have to corner it easiest to corner them is on a wall. Okay, so that's why we when I say, uh, you know, you open the water, suspend over long points, main channels, I want you to fish on the, on the on the point with the main channel, I want you to be on this side because at this two six o'clock moment, the fish will push the bait close to the bank, and that's where you're going to get your chance, your best chance, at the active feeding times. And when they're active, it don't matter what you're using; they're going to bite it. 
and that's key. Whereas if you're off hours, you got to do something tricky, you know? You got to get creative for them to buy it. So I hope that kind of helps everybody out, out a little bit. I uh, hope you guys learned something. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, by the way, all the all the lores and everything will be in the video description. Uh, so you can go ahead and buy, buy the ones that we actually say uh, and use. Basically, all the swim baits are Kytex. Uh, it's a Mac, Captain Max umbrella rig. And uh, the jerk baits will be down there. And also the flukes from Zoom. That's an excellent lore. I'm trying to incorporate that this year. Uh, save a lot of money that way. So all that video the description, and on top of that, uh, this is part one of a fishing explained series. We're thinking about coming coming up with an entire YouTube channel just be, just just on that alone. Uh, but this definitely is going to be a twelve parter, one for every month. And what I'm trying to do is for every month, uh, kind of introduce you guys to what the fish are doing, uh, another top three baits to go after them, where they're located at, and time of day. So that we can be successful, and we can do, you know, uh, so the guys that are new coming in, they can be successful in striper fishing. Because this fish is a fish that fights hard and tastes good. Okay, so a lot of people want to have the adrenaline, and on top of that, they want to bring food home to feed the family. So it's a great fish species for that. Stripers, white bass, and hybrid stripers—they all kind of kind of do the same thing. They're kind of different in sizes, but they all pretty much behave the same. So I'll give you an example of why you want to subscribe. You don't want to miss out, okay? Because this is February. We already skipped January because we're starting in February, okay? But next month, we're going to start talking about pre-spawn, where fish will gang up by the thousands in specific locations that are very predictable before they head upriver to make their runs to spawn. Spawn typically happens in April, maybe even June. And we're going to talk what we're going to need every month to go and uh, attack these fish, right? Whether you're fishing for fun or whether you're fishing for the table, it doesn't matter. You know, no discrimination here. Uh, we just want you guys to be educated. We want you guys to know where to go to catch these fish. So, for example, in June, it's top water season, right? We're going to be throwing giant plugs. But in July, when it's too hot, we're going to be fishing big jerk baits at night, okay? And in the fall, it's nothing but topwaters again, but they don't want to talk to big topwater. They want the small topwaters, okay? So all that stuff, we're going to cover all that. Hopefully your, your tackle box has got some space because we're going to pretty, pretty much fill them up, okay? So once again, it's Connery from Out of Work Outdoors. I hope you learned something. Share this video with a friend, and be sure to subscribe to the channel, okay? And if you're a bass fisherman, we're going to do one on bass too. So we're doing stripers and bass this year. And we might do another one on the tournament trails. I don't know. Let me know what you guys want to see on the series that we will update you every month on. And we will do it. And like I said, knowledge is dangerous. Okay? Alright. See you guys on the next one. Yo. So thanks for watching this fishing video. Before leaving, don't forget to subscribe. Take the bell. And put a thumbs up. See you. Bye bye guys. Take care.